Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. In the last Kafka video, we created a producer together and we set up the Docker Compose file so we actually could uh, get a Kafka environment running on our own uh, machine. We, we, we created a Kafka container, we also created a Sue container. Um, so tonight we're going to create the consumer because uh, last time we had a producer that produced a lot of, uh, lot of messages but we actually could not confirm that those messages actually ended up on the right topic or, and on the, uh, on the broker. And when I say broker, just here, Kafka server. Um, so let us just uh, jump right into it. The steps that we need to go through uh, to create this Kafka consumer right here. They are uh, listed to the uh, yeah as as this read in this readme.markdown file. Uh, we need to create some. Uh, we need to set up some Spring configuration first. We need to enable uh, Kafka. That's important. Then we need to uh, actually we need to create this concurrent Kafka listener container factory. This is the one we need to create. But in order to create that, then we need to create a consumer factory bean. And the, it actually it, it takes some uh, some configuration. They need to know where where is the broker located, what is the server address. Uh, it needs to get a group ID. That is because this is because we uh, consumers can be grouped together. We only have one consumer in this example right here. I'm trying to keep it simple right now. Um, and then we have some uh, serialization. What what is it that we are uh, is, uh, consuming? What is that we was it? What is it that we are receiving? Right now it's just strings. We c it could also be more uh, complex if that's what we wanted to. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, but uh, right now it's just uh, strings. So we will look into how to serialize more complex object another time. But uh, yeah, so so we are just setting these uh, these both the, the yeah we both we are setting these value and key uh, deserializer to to the string to the default string deserializer which comes with Kafka. But let us get uh, right into it. Yeah, the, the, in the in the end we are going to create a listener. That's the last thing we're going to do, and we and that is uh, actually the easiest part. We just annotate a method with add Kafka listener, and then we give a topic or a list of topics, and then we can uh, also give a group. Of ID again, uh, uh, since we can we can group uh, consumers together. But let us just uh, get get started. I created this project by pressing File New, and then Projects, and then I chose Spring Initializer. I chose SDK 11. I press Next. I chose Gradle just because I prefer that. You can also use Maven, of course. I chose Java 11 like that. I press Next. I ticked off Lombok. I created also Web Projects, so I added also Spring Web. So that means that then I can have some rest endpoints if that's not what I want to. Uh, and then I wrote Kafka right here. And then I chose not Kafka streams. Be careful. Don't take Kafka streams. Take Kafka. Uh, the, the difference is that if, whether you want to play around with the API directly or if you want to use the, the spring wrap, the API instead. And we, we, we want to have the, we want to use the, 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 the spring wrap uh, API uh, or the library. Yeah, the spring library. And you will probably also, it's also most certain if you're just a, a normal uh, developer against uh, Kafka, uh, then you would, pr uh, and you're using Spring, then you would probably uh, need to use the Spring for Kafka, for Apache Kafka, without the streams after it. It's it's only in special situations that you would need the the Apache Kafka streams library. That's actually it. Then I press next, next, finish, and I ended up with this project right here. So the first thing we need to create, we need to create uh, some configuration. So I need some. And I'll create a package called name config. Then I'll create a consumer configuration right here, like this. I'll annotate this with configuration. I'll annotate this with enable Kafka. This is important. We need to enable Kafka. And then we want to create the then we want to create the factory. Let me just check right here. Then we want to create the yeah we want to create this concurrent Kafka listener container factory. It's a long name, so I'm going to copy that. So and we want to annotate this with bean bean like this, and then we can yeah let us name the method a little bit something a little bit smaller. Oh um, alt enter import. Thank you very much. Concurrent 
Ja, Container Factory, let us just call it, let us just give it that name. And I can put it up on this line again right here. And then we need to return some Container Factory, new, concurrent, Kafka, blah, 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 Container Factory. And let me just check. It's actually, I think it's, we have a default one, default concurrent concurrent oh, okay uh, let me just look in my i cheated a little bit i wrote some code here first so we can actually see here oh, i actually created it and then afterwards and i set the consumer factory so let us just create a concurrent kafka factory like this and we want to set this to a local variable like this introduce a new local variable kafka listener container factory yes yes Let's try to keep it a little short, a little shorter. So, and then we have the Kafka listener container factory. Then we need to set the set the consumer factory that is right there. And then we need to create the consumer factory factory like this. And yes, it's a method. Yeah, let us create a new method right here. Consumer factory. And I'm going to make it public so it's easier to test. I'm going to annotate with bean and I'm also going to change the scope for this method right here again so it is, it is easier to test and the consumer factory here that this is a little bit this is where we actually place the configuration so we have the consumer factory right here string string consumer factory equals new consumer factory Okay, that is actually the default consumer factory, right? Can default, yeah, default Kafka consumer factory like this. And this takes then a, a map with the configuration. So let us just write config right here. And then we'll create a map. And this is string and object. And config equals new hash map like this. Yes, and then we add so our configuration right here. And um, I already have the configuration prepared in the readme.markdown fi file right here. This is where we have the props right here. This is the properties that we need. So I'm going to copy these, copy and paste. And now it's just config instead of props. Let me just replace all those and replace all. Thank you very much. And then we need to import. And now I need some, uh, some Kafka properties that I've not defined yet. Um, and let us just, let me create some new Kafka properties file right here. So this is uh, my Kafka properties. And I want to annotate this with properties, properties, configuration properties like this. And the prefix is just my Kafka. We did the same for the producer in the in the video that I created uh, earlier. That means that then in our application right here, then we need to enable that we can use configuration properties. I like to use configuration properties instead of using at value because this gives us more, it's, it's more type safe and it, uh, it's, it's easier to reuse the same property in, mul in multiple classes. So configuration properties and then we say value equals and then we give an array right here and inside the array we have the consumer and uh, we have the my Kafka properties, my Kafka properties right there at our class. And now everyone should be happy. Let us just check. Configuration. Oh, it is. It was the wrong. It was the wrong place. Sorry about that. I'll just undo all this. I, I went to the test. How did I end up down here? That was a bit weird. Oh, th this was the one I wanted. The Kafka consumer application enable. Enable configuration properties. That was sorry about that. Value equals, and then we say an array of, uh, and here we just have the my Kafka properties like this. The class, 
And what this does is like that now I can um, now I can create a field private uh, string bootstrap address like this, and then I can have the same field in my application. The problem is right here, my Kafka, and then that's uh, bootstrap address like this, and look. Then I can say localhost, localhost. And the port that I chose uh, yesterday, I, let us just go check, but I think I remember the port. In our Docker Compose file, we have a, an external listener right there, which is 290.92. And we, also, we can also see we have it right here. So let us just take that port. I'll go back to my consumer right here. So this is my bootstrap address, localhost. 290 and 92 and now I want to inject the configuration that we created and I will do that by adding the lumbar required arcs constructor that means that then it will create a constructor for me if I have a field with final in it so if I create a private final and then my Kafka promises like this uh, Kafka promises then Lombok will actually create a constructor that uh, matches the um, that takes the my Kafka promises as an argument and that will make the injection occur so that means uh, down here that I can just write Kafka promises get bootstrap address ah oh, I forgot some one thing in my Kafka promises I need to annotate this with data so I get the getters and setters for free. I don't want to write that code, uh, boilerplate code myself. So now we just have Kafka properties, Kafka properties, and then we have a group ID. Yeah, why not? We can create a constant. We, we can create a constant over there, but then I want to use it the static way. My Kafka properties. We could also make it configurable, actually. Let us make it configurable this time. So, uh, we'll then say consumer, consumer group ID like this. Actually, I I wanted I wanted to be I wanted to be a uh, constant. Actually, my Kafka properties that consumer group. ID. I'll show you why a little bit later. So let us just create it. Create constant field. Yes, let us do that. And that is a string. And the consumer ID right here is just um, yeah, Mike's consumer group. Mike's consumer group. That that is the ID. <coughs> Since we only have one consumer right now, of course, it's not uh, needed, but um, Okay, so then, then we have the string deserializer right there we need to add, and that is the Kafka one. We're actually, we're only using the value by, by default, but as with, uh, it's actually, it's possible to attach a key to each message if you want to. This can ensure that the, that the, uh, that the order that we, uh, that we get the, the messages in, are the, in that, is the, that is the correct order of all the events. Um, but we're not using this in this example right here. Um, so let us just return the consumer factory. We can talk about that uh, another time, what a key is and uh, when to use it. I also mentioned it uh, in, the, in the earlier video, actually. But uh, yeah, but we are we are no, we are just using the values right now. We are not uh, we are not using the key, the message key yet. So let me return also from this method right here. Return hope. Return Kafka listener factory like this. Uh, it starts to look like something, right? We are pretty far now. The last thing now is actually to create the consumer itself. So now I'll create a new package. Consumer. And I'll create a consumer service. And then I'll annotate this with uh, service. Remember, if you don't if you don't know if if it should be a, a service or if it should be a 
uh, controller, then then always choose uh, our component, then then always choose service. Uh, that, that is the default one. If you want to use the model view can, uh, controller or something like that, of course, then you need to use the controller. But if you're in, in, in any doubts, then almost in 99% in of the um, the cases, then you actually want to annotate your um, your class with with service. Let us create. Now I can create a listener right here, and that was the Kafka Kafka listener like this. And here we could say here we could give it some topics, and that is an array of the topics that we want to listen for. I just wanted to listen for one topic that is Mike. We I hard coded that yesterday in uh, in the producer code, so um, I'm going to hard code it again today. Uh, just uh, yeah, of course we could have also made that configurable. Um, then we have the what do we have? Then we have the group ID also right here. Group ID right there. This is the consumer group, and that is why I wanted this as a constant. Consumer group ID, thank you very much. And then we have our method right here. Public void, consume uh, message, messages like this. And then I can just give it a string and message as an argument. We can play around with headers. Uh, we will do that another time. I just want this. Uh, I want to keep. I want to keep this. Uh, these these videos as small as possible. Uh, so right now we just want the most uh, basic example up and running. So um, yeah. So we are consuming a message right here. And now I want to lock it. So SL for J. Need to annotate that. Again, that's lumpbox. So now I can just write lump lock dot info, and then and then I write uh, re receive a message or oh, yeah I can also write the uh, consumer like this so then we know it comes from here consumer and then we will have the message as an as a parameter as an argument right here I'll write message right there so now we can write up out now we will uh, write out in the, in the console all of the messages that we actually receive let us try to another thing actually I did I forgot to tell you about is that I changed the port to 8282 and that's because I already have the producer running on port 8080, or oh, I, I haven't got that uh, got that yet, but I will, I will start it up uh, uh, yeah, in just a moment. Now we will just start the consumer first, and then we'll start the producer afterwards. And the producer runs on 8080. Let's just see if I made any mistakes. Let's just see what happened here now. Fail to start. Oh, let's see here, internal, blah, 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 topics, mic, are not present. Yeah, okay, I know why. The, the, this uh, this topic is not created inside Kef Kafka yet, and that is because um, we have not started up our producer yet, yet. and in the producer that um, that we created the, the last time, then we actually uh, we actually created this topic right here, and but since we have not started the producer yet, then this code has not been run. That means that the mic topic does not exist yet. So let us just run the producer application right here. So now it's running a port 8080, and the, the mic topic should now exist. Let us just see. Look here, every 10 seconds or so, I think it's it's producing. Then it's producing a message. And hello, zero, this is message, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, look here, it's, it's producing a, a, lot, a lot of messages. Yes, every 10 seconds, it produces a new message. This is fine for us. So now we will start up our consumer again, because now the mic topic should be available to listen to, to consume from. And let's just see what actually happened here. Consumer, we received the message. Hello, three. So we got the message. We got message three. Reset offset. Okay, so we actually set the offset to three because that was the point in time where we actually started up the application. Uh, and that is another. That's a whole other discussion, and we need to talk about that. What happens if the consumer uh, stops and then starts uh, later on? As you can see here, actually we will just miss a lot of messages uh, if, if you just if you just use the default setup. Uh, but there, there are actually, there are actually it's possible to set the offsets uh, and and to determine that uh, 
But uh, yeah, as I said earlier, we are going to keep this uh, as simple as possible, this consumer demo right here. But you can see here now we're actually consuming messages. We're getting all these messages. Hello 8, this is a Kafka message, and that is exactly what our producer just uh, created. So um, I'm very happy. I'm very proud of myself as usual. I don't know if you can see the output. So let me just, let me just move myself a bit up. So now you can actually see the beautiful console output coming here, then this, this is the proof that the, both the producer and the consumer actually works. Um, and also, of course, the Kafka containers which run, uh, which are being started from the consumer. If you think this went a little bit too fast and you would like to look at the code, then of course, as usual, I'm going to upload all of the code to uh, to GitHub and I'm placing the the URL, the, yeah, the location, I'm going to place that in the description as usual. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope to see you again soon. And feel free to leave a comment as usual. And have a great evening. Bye-bye.